Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGange, you doing political commentary with the media speaks. Now, behind me is a piece of the old set. Why? Because the rest of the set has, in fact, been deconstructed. Um, we're in redoing all of the graphics and whatnot in the studio. <clears throat> we're going to have a uh, rather large screen TV over here. Actually, low def people, you'll get a sneak preview. How's that? We're going to have a real nice TV set up over here. As it stands right now, you're going to get the studio in construction as it is. There's not much we can do about it. But it doesn't matter because no matter how dumb this studio looks, it is not nearly as dumb as the stories that you are about to get. It's a Dunce Cap of the Month Award. EAJ News, EAG News, Kyle Olson. Photo, and this is where I wish I had the graphics already. Photo serves, school serves burnt burritos covered with melted plastic for a healthy lunch. You know, when I put these shows together, um, how do I want to put this? You end up with a lot of stories. You, you know, like, I don't know if I'll be able to do this one or that one or this one, because there's so many dumdies that you have to try to get to. Well, this one stood out. Like, the moment I saw it, I knew exactly where it was going. Exactly. No no questions asked. It was going to be on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Uh, listen to this. Philippi, West Virginia. Think you've seen the worst of awful school lunches? Think again. Several students and parents shared photos of their recent disgusting cafeteria lunch at West Virginia's Felipe Middle School. <clears throat> it says that they featured the severely burned burritos mel in melted plastic. And you can see that that's exactly what it is. The plastic is like gelled onto the food. And for those of you that know what bisphenol A is, BPA, it's been linked to a lot of health problems. Everything's linked to cancer. It is too. But it also can give boys man tits. And it can actually change the sexual proclivities of uh, newborns. By that I mean... Are some people born gay? Maybe they are. Are some people made gay? Yes. I understand some people are born gay. That's fine. But bisphenol A can actually change the sexual preference when exposed to at a very young age, especially uh, exposed to in utero. So anyway, <clears throat> the kids were getting a healthy dose, dose of bisphenol A for sure on this one. It says um, they were eating plastic and the chemicals that melted with the plastic. That's not good, says Sherry Bolton, a grandparent of a Felipe student. I think this was something they weren't used to making, so they just burned them. And rather than choosing to throw them away and remake, remaking something else, because of what was on the menu that day, they served them. The whole thing has administrators apologizing and saying employees will receive training. Training? You can't nuke a piece of meat without burning the plastic to it. I don't think there is training for you. Since I am aware of the situation that happened in Felipe Middle School regarding lunch on the behalf of the Board of Education and myself, I extend an apology to the students and their families that were involved with that. And we are doing training to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Barber County School Superintendent Joe Super tells WDTV. Well, that's a super job there, buddy. It says uh, he didn't elaborate on what training is required to inform employees most human beings wouldn't eat such a lunch. Well written sentence. Meanwhile, in Indiana, as we're going on our dumdies here, <clears throat> school district is warning that apple slices packed in accordance with federal school food service guidelines, will make children violently ill or may even kill them. Wani Schools announced Friday that it had received a notice the night before announcing the product recall of Sun Rich Fresh Foods, Inc. That notice warned that the packaged apple slices may be contaminated with Listeria monocytogenes, an infectious organism that can cause serious, sometimes fatal, illness in young children. According to the school's district warning, it says they're asking any children who may have bought the packaged apples slices home to bring them to school as soon as possible. Yeah, don't just throw them away. Bring them back to the school. So they can be accidentally eaten, of course. We'll give training on how to make sure that doesn't happen. 
Symptoms of this include high fever, severe headache, nausea, stiffness, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Pretty much everything does the same thing, so now they won't know if they have the flu or not. The Food Poisoning Bulletin reports the recall extends to 10 states in all and include Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, North Dakota, Ohio, where I am in, Wisconsin, and West Virginia. So, I mean, the Apple thing, I get it. But the plastic, dummy of the month. That's not the dumbest, no. We've got, we've got a couple stories left before we get to that. Again, slightly shorter due to the uh, studio reconstruction and some of the dumdies having been uh, not properly saved. This is also EAG News, oddly enough. Victor Skinner writes, School calls police for lewd and lascivious complaint. Two seven-year-olds kissing. This is in uh, Brenton, Florida. Officials at the elementary school in Manatee County, Florida, called police to investigate possible lewd and lascivious behavior after two students kissed on the lips. Ooh, the smoking gun reports Manatee County Sheriff's Deputy April Coolbreath responded to a call by school officials after two seven-year-old students allegedly kissed on the lips in class in late April. Well, I, I saw this in the comment line. Someone said if they had been two boys kissing or two girls kissing, they would have been used as an example of the future of the country. And again, I'm not against... <clears throat> bisexuality or whatever someone is into to each their own um i'm against the way it's portrayed as something that everyone has to accept me i ain't got a problem with it some people do you shouldn't have to accept anything but um <clears throat> two two normal kids of course they get the police called on them it says according to the incident report generated by the potentially unnatural kiss allegations were how is it unnatural it's the most natural kiss ever Allegations were made <clears throat> that the seven-year-old kissed a, another seven-year-old on the lips during class yesterday. The names have been redacted, according to WFTV.com. Unnatural. I spoke with the children's teacher who witnessed the incident, and there was not at the school to be interviewed. So we're going to interview the kids about this. <clears throat> there is no indication that there was anything sexual about this incident and there is no evidence to support a violation of Florida law in this case. You used to hand out Valentine's Day candy. You would get kisses all the time. At least everybody else did. I never did. The ridiculous, unnatural complaint generated quite a conversation online where most people reviewed the report as a waste of police resources. I would say so. If you report two seven-year-old children kissing as something too erotic, that sounds sick to even say when you're talking about kids, Maybe you're the one with the problem, David Weinberg posted on Facebook. God love him. Wow, really? A couple of second graders exchanging a kiss and a criminal investigation ensues. What is wrong with people? Mike Tierney questioned. John Davis blames the teacher who reported the incident to authorities. Are teachers really that stupid? Well, I don't know. The cooks are, if you judge by the last story. No wonder children aren't learning. Their teachers are morons. Commentator J.J. Smith took issue with Davis's comments. Mr. Davis, you are the moron. First, teachers are required to report such behavior. Well, they shouldn't be. Uh, the Jews, I mean, the, 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 the German populace was told to report on the Jews' whereabouts. Well, they shouldn't have been either. And then police are required to follow up. Well, they shouldn't be. Not on this instances. They shouldn't have been reported. Why? Because sexualized behavior is learned. And police have to determine how involved that behavior is. Utter BS. Utter BS. Everyone listening to this has had a schoolyard kiss when they were a little kid. Unless, of course, you know, you just, nobody ever kissed you. But, I mean, you knew your friends were getting kissed, didn't you? I'm, I'm being facetious, but you know exactly what I mean. This is the height of stupidity here. It's not sexualized behavior. How did every other generation grow up without the police being called? When it happens in every other school, what the hell? It says the fact is we live in a world where young children are exploited and the teachers you call morons are on the front line educating and protecting the children. <clears throat> exploited? It was another seven-year-old that did it unprompted by an adult. Therefore, it is impossible for one little kid to exploit another little kid giving their what's probably their first kiss ever. 
absolute mind rot. If you people do not call the school that I mentioned here, I don't even know why I'm doing this show. I really don't. I do this because I want you guys calling. I want you guys knowing what's going on in the world and pointing out the stupidity that is everywhere we freaking look. John Curry believes the incident is part of a much bigger problem of political correctness and failure taking over public schools. Amen. Says, ah, the modern school system, teachers and administrators, wasting our time and money and failing in, very, in every aspect. Curry posted, now they are wasting the time of the police, too, by calling them for nonsense. If I was the cops called over this BS, I'd be pretty pissed off. Not a single one of the teachers or administrators have an ounce of common sense. Every word of that's a correct view. Others offered theories on why the educators believe the behavior to be unnatural and lascivious. Unnatural? Must have been a boy and a girl, Tony Stiles posted. Ting! <clears throat> if it was a boy-boy or a girl-girl, then not only would it be okay, it would be applauded and celebrated even, William Wheeler wrote, and he's right. And friends, that brings us to the dum de dum de dum de dum de dum de of the day. Um, this, this... This might win the, the, the dunce cap of the year, okay? Really, this might just win the absolute dumdy of the year. Let's get our dumdy music here going. Yes, friends, it is that bad. We need dumdy music. Absolutely. Here we go. Let's get it going. A little bit of fraggle dumdy. Yeah. So, I mean, what are you going to do? There's the dum dee music. All right, let me read this. Paul Joseph Watson. dum dee dum dee dum dee April 22nd, 2015. U.S. Army forces cadets to wear high heels to promote feminism. ROTC cadets told that their careers would be finished if they refused to participate. Talk about the benefits of lying. Cadets were threatened that their careers would be finished if they refuse to participate in a feminist campaign to promote the completely debunked college rape culture myth by wearing red spray-painted high heels. First of all, they had to spray paint them red because it was only the really large shoe that they could even find to fit a six and a half foot man into because there aren't that many fat women in the world. Second of all, there is no rape culture. The only rape culture we have can usually be found in hip hop music. There is no rape culture. I don't know a single person who would be part of this mythical rape culture that they want to say exists everywhere, and it doesn't. Okay, I, I make a large part of my living DJing in an adult club. That's a topless club for you uh, Kesha fans. Nobody. I don't know anybody there. Any of the customers, whether they be normal or weird, I don't know any of them that are in favor of rape. I have a degree. And hard to believe, huh? I went uh, to Stark State, got a degree in interactive media technology. Um, guess what? No rape culture. Nowhere in the college. Sorry, doesn't exist. So first of all, they say that there's a rape culture so that you're dumb enough to fall for it. Well, there must be because they said there was, so I'll keep reading. Imagine what ISIS or the Russian military is thinking when they see these images. Third wave feminism has poisoned everything, even the U.S. military. And that's right. Again, I want to I want to clarify what third wave feminism is. First wave feminism actually had a point. Now, the, you know, the, the whole uh, women should be allowed to vote movement and all of that. But fast forward to the third wave feminism here a couple generations later. And what we have is absolute mind rot that you'd have to be an idiot to adhere to anything that they say. It says, update, InfoWars was contacted by a former U.S. Army service member who told us that his unit, the Delta Company, 1st Battalion, 2nd Infantry Regiment, 172nd Infantry Brigade, was also forced to participate in the Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event in 2011. Now, let me ask you something. I know Mark Dice mentioned this. I, I, I had this ready to go, and then I, I saw he covered it, and I was like, ugh. But no, he didn't ask the obvious question here that I, I wish he would have, so I'm going to cover it. And again, this was chosen before he ever covered that. It's great minds think alike. Um, walk a mile in her shoes. Well, Christelle, Christelle is a, a, a dancer. She spends a lot of her time in high heels. She really does. But 
almost all of her time is spent in sandals, maybe gym shoes. So if you were actually going to put a man in women's shoes, even a dancer who they're known for wearing heels, even then, guess what? It wouldn't be heels. So another false dichotomy given as if it's some great um, privilege. Oh, walk a mile in her shoes and see how she feels. Nobody asked her to wear the damn high heels. I'm, I'm just saying, if a woman doesn't want to wear high heels, don't wear them. It's not like anybody made you do it. So I was deployed in Afghanistan during this time, but my comrades in the rear told me this event was a mandatory, he writes. In the rear, that's what they want you to do. As a former medic, I know that the only way out of this is to lie about injuries or pull some form of guard duty at this time. So if you are in the Army and you see anybody with really large shoes being spray-painted red, Lie about an injury or do some card duty or you're going to be part of the stupidest laughing stock ever. And friends, that brings us to the reading of the award. This is going to be sent to the U.S. Army, by the way. Let's see it right here. Here's what I wrote. And it'll be trimmed. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award for the U.S. Army. In a world where ISIS threatens the very freedom of the world, where Russia has questionable intentions toward the West, and in general, the world seems to dance ever closer to war. You, at the United States Army, have managed to prove that you know how to make America look weaker than ever before by deciding to parade our brave men who have signed up by choice with no draft needed in women's red high heels. Blind to the fact that third-rate feminism is a joke, oblivious to the fact that the world is watching, and dumb to the fact that there is no rape culture either on college, campus, slash dorms around the United States of America or anywhere in our society. Again, we have rapists. We don't have a rape culture. For that, you at the U.S. Army have won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. We now trust you just a little bit less than before. Way to go. And I want to show you the dunce cap here created by uh, the beautiful Christelle. Oh, let me make sure low def gets it first here. See her dromedary? Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, my high def people. Her, her dromedary there. It says, together we stand in heels. Friends, you're listening to the dunce cap of the month award show, The Correct Views. This is going to be set exactly like you see it, to the United States Army. Why? Because that's how we point out stupidity in our world. That's how we don't put up with absolute asinine people being our leaders forever. I've pointed it out. I've showed you who you want to talk to, who you want to complain to, who you want to ask questions to. Why are you serving our children burnt lunches? Why are you marching us around in red high heels when we're in the Army to humiliate us and make us uh, 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 cater to a feminism desire or agenda that has nothing to do with logic and reason at all. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, Sam I. B. DeGange, doing commentary for The Media Speaks. You can donate to the show at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Go to stickerjunkie.com. You see these awesome stickers? Bam, passing time. Hell yeah. These stickers were made by Sticker Junkie. Just do me a favor. Go to stickerjunkie.com. Let David and Lake know you, uh, you heard about Sticker Junkie from The Correct Views. When you do that, you're going to get one hell of a deal. See you, friends. Good night. God bless. Don't forget, donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Get a hold of me to advertise as well. Good night, friends. God bless.